Everyone is fascinated by volcanoes. That is, as long as they're not too close to them when they erupt. Volcanoes produce molten lava. Well, yes, some of them do. But others produce great masses of gas, dust and ash. Destructive things, aren't they? But I tell you, without volcanic activity, there would be no life upon this earth at all. This is Mount St. Helens in Washington State on the west coast of the USA. After lying dormant for 123 years, she blew her top, at least 6.7 billion tons of it. That single explosion ripped out this side of the mountain, leaving a scene of total chaos. And yet already a new volcanic cone is building up at the rate of one to two metres a day, containing the enormous pressures within. That's the youngest rock in the new world, and it's still in the process of formation. One reason why I'm not going any closer. Yet this scene of total chaos and destruction holds a clue to the rich soils which make up the foundation of the real estates of America. All rocks which go to make up the surface of the earth start their lives in the same way, spewed out by volcanic fire, and all are made up of the same component, various admixtures of 98 stable elements. And of all those elements, only four can be said to be really both common and abundant. That is, in absolute terms. You see, in terms of total makeup, for every hundred atoms which make up the planet Earth, well, three of them are hydrogen, six are aluminium, 20 are silicon, and 60, yes, 60, are oxygen. So what do we know about those, the commonest elements? Well, oxygen we all know about because we need it in every breath we take. If not, we die. Mix oxygen with hydrogen and you get water, the commonest of all the compounds on the face of the Earth. But how about aluminium and silica? Well, they help to make light of our modern lives. Aluminium, of course, mixed with other metals in the form of alloys. And silicon as all glass and in the ubiquitous silicon chip. But I tell you, they're much, much more important than that. They're the raw materials for both America and the world's most precious and important resource, living soil. Take a rock. They don't come much younger than that. Add it to water and anything can happen. This is the fastest navigable waterway in the world roaring its way over no fewer than 288 rapids on its way down through the Grand Canyon. The mighty Colorado River, which carries 20,000 tourists and many millions of tons of rock each year down on a ride of a lifetime. Only in the quieter stretches can you sit back and take in all the majesty and spectacle of the rocks. Layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. It took more than three billion years to lay down all these rocks. And yet, it's taken the Colorado River less than one ten thousandth of that time to carve this hole, a mile deep and in places more than 14 miles across. The world's best example of the erosive power of white water. And what's more, it's still going on. Rocks are being cleaved from cliffs and ground down into boulders and pebbles, sand and silt.
But this is no place just to sit back and think about erosion. I know what it's like to be eroded. Boulders. Smaller boulders, even smaller, doing their best to hang on in the current. And then in the quietest, slackest water, sand and silt sinking down to the bottom all around you. At last. Now that was an object lesson in. Keep your mind on what you're doing, especially when going through the rapids. Oh. It was also an object lesson in the process of mechanical erosion. And there's the end product. Finely ground rocks full of all the minerals any healthy plant could want. But I tell you, if that's all that happened, there would not be much vegetation on this dry earth. There is, however, another process of erosion which has made this green world possible. A process which goes on all the time wherever there is sufficient water. It's called chemical erosion or weathering. Now here, away from the main rush of water gushing out of the rock up there, there's sufficient moisture throughout the year to allow a much more gentle process to take place. Not a grinding up, a smashing up of the rocks into smaller and smaller pieces, but a way in which the actual constituents of those rocks are rearranged to form brand new minerals. And those minerals are called clay. And there's the stuff all over the end of my finger. And because clay is so important in all our lives, I must try and show you something more about its structure. To do that, I've got to climb several hundred metres up the canyon wall. Yep, I made it. Now I get to try and use the wall of the Grand Canyon as the biggest blackboard in the world. Do you remember the rocks that were being spewed out from Mount St. Helens volcano? And I said that two of their commonest ingredients were aluminium and silicon. Now, the process of chemical erosion turns those into crystalline form, and the crystals are like flat plates, rather like these lovely layers of rock. Now, imagine that the black ones are aluminium and the white ones are silicon. Now, wherever an impurity gets in all, say, like a magnesium, then it leaves a minute electric charge on the surface of these crystals. If you imagine another and another and another, so the whole thing is like a battery, it becomes charged up. Well, the wall of the canyon here is perhaps made up of a thousand plates, but there were that many on the smear of clay on the end of my finger. So clay is a minute battery, fully charged and able to do all sorts of marvellous things. The first man who braved the waters of the Colorado and came across this green oasis called it Vase's Paradise. Lush greenness with the delicate maidenhair fern, the marsh helleborine orchid and many others. The bulk of these plants just wouldn't be able to grow here without the clay. Remember all those minute electric charges? Well, they allow the clay to bind the mineral particles together and form soil. Just like in your own back garden, clay holds the minerals in a form in which they're available for plant growth. The plants then add their own special bit of living magic, speeding the process of soil formation. Vases Paradise, set within the most magnificent feature of the whole of the USA, just one of many special places, each of which can add to our story. A story which started with volcanic fire, continued with the erosive and creative power of water, and ended up with the formation of living soil. Now we add time to the picture, and there is no better place to understand the importance of that ingredient than here on the Mendocino coast of California. because this is the site of a gigantic natural experiment. 
which have been going on for more than 500,000 years. This whole section of coast and way inland is made of the same sort of bedrock. This stuff with the lovely name of Glay Washer. And there it is, the bedrock, here and there overlaid by pebbles and sand. And they're made of exactly the same stuff as that. Now they're the products of mechanical erosion by the pound power of the waves out there. And it really is tough stuff, these Glay Wackies. There's no way that I'm going to be able to split up one of those pebbles. But given time, something much gentler than either I or the waves are going to do just that. They're going to reduce those pebbles to a powder of minerals and clay. This is no ordinary bit of beach. In fact, I'm walking across the first step of a giant escalator which can allow us to travel through time. You see, the whole section of this coast is rising up above the reach of the waves. And the top of the beach here, the pebbles, the rock and the sand, have only just made it above the highest tide. But those at the top of the cliff have been exposed to the local climate for much, much longer. Come on up, the view is fine. Miles and miles of grassland covered with beautiful flowers, and yet 100,000 years ago, all this was down at the level of the sea. And I can prove it. Now there's the bedrock, the grey wacky, and piled up on top of it, all those pebbles and sand, and you can see the sand had actually concreted the pebbles together. And they're still very, very tough things. Just like they were down on the beach. All that's happened is they've been lifted up until they got to this position. But if we look at the top, we'll see some pretty fantastic changes have taken place. Now there, that isn't just sand, that's a rich, a humus rich soil. And if we take a look, we can see that it consists of all different sized bits and pieces, clumps, each one bursting with available mineral nutrients. Now, how did that all come about? Well, over an immense length of time, rain falling on the surface has percolated down through here and begun the process of chemical weathering, producing clays which have helped bind the mineral particles together. But also, all these plant roots reaching down for the water have also produced organic matter and they've helped in this binding process until we have a living soil. That's why it can support such a wonderful array of grassland plants. Here, close to the sea, salt-laden winds may help to maintain the open vegetation. But wherever we find ancient grassland across the face of America, we find similar pretty plants and soils bursting with promise. Oh, I do like flowers. Step number two on our escalator of time covered with grassland which are underlain by molly soils. Molly means soft, full of wonderful organic matter. And to remind us of the structure, well, I've had prepared a portable profile. A strip of soil has been dug out and mounted on the board so that we can carry it with us on our journey and see what happens to that in another 100,000 years. Remember, this whole section of the coast is being uplifted. So we have a giant staircase reaching inland and back not only into the past of California, but also into the history of soil development. We've done it. The third step, two kilometers inland and 23 meters above the last step. And haven't things changed? 